안녕하십니까 김경원입니다. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Kim k y u n g w o n This is second lecture of Doctor's Tip Easy Hands On. Today, I'm going to talk about Austin Guide System Kit. Recently, Austin launched One Guide System, which is a digital guide using CT, and Austin is actively marketing and using it. Before I begin about One Guide System, let's look at two previous conventional models in turn, and then look at Austin Guide System. I'm going to briefly talk about it. First, Positioning Guide Kit. This kit is used for partially edentulous cases without making special surgical stent, and you can easily set up drill direction or position. That's the kit for that. Next, the Smart Guide Kit. This kit, without using CT on the study model, you can easily make a surgical stent. Third, I'm going to briefly look at One Guide Kit. As I mentioned earlier, using this positioning guide kit, which is used for partially edentulous cases, this kit without making special surgical stent, you can easily set up drill direction or position. That's the concept you should bear in mind. The advantages of position guide kit. Freehand surgery is highly skilled, sensitive, and can be placed in an undesirable way. For instance, there could be malpositioning of fixture. Implants can be placed too close to adjacent teeth or adjacent fixtures, so it can be used for those cases. Such issues could lead to difficulty in prosthodontics and bad long-term prognosis. However, using positioning guide kit, they can easily be addressed. Let's take a look. Characteristics of positioning guide kit. There are largely three. First, as mentioned before, you can think of it as something to get precise drilling position. Second, after drilling, you can use guide pins to check direction between fixtures, as well as gaps between fixtures. Third, as you can see, the positioning guide kit is made of transparent material. So during surgery, surgical field is not obstructed, and you can check drilling position easily. Positioning guide kit's components. Let's take another look. There are three main tools. First, and the most important, is the guide tool. One, there is a transparent single guide. There is diameters there. The other one is bridge guide. In some ways, you make when you make bridges, you can adjust different types of spacing. Second is drilling tool. It's for drilling. Third, it's for checking path. Easily put. It's similar to guide pin in a conventional surgical kit. The tool is similar to that to checking the path. Another point: when you place fixtures consecutively, you put in fixture first, and then put in the guide pin to check the path. So that's the three types of tools that we have. To take a closer look, first up is the single guide from the guide tool. Single guide, as you can see, has six. Different special specifications. So diameters between five to ten, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten millimeters. It has six drilling sizes. For example, if you choose ten millimeter diameter single guide and place five millimeter fixture, then there's two point five millimeter space front and back. The narrowest five millimeter diameter single guide can can be used for narrow locations like anterior side of mandible. When you place three millimeter fixture, you get one millimeter of space front and back. When you choose eight millimeter diameter implant and place four millimeter fixture, you get two millimeter space front and back. 
Likewise, once you choose the fixture size, you can choose between six different single guides. As mentioned, it is made of transparent material, and you can easily check drill position and direction during surgery. With these single guides, the autoclave is possible, so just to sterilize it. Our recommendation is single use. Use only for one patient and discard it. Use only once. That's the design. Next, the bridge guide. Fan type. It's like a fan. During drilling, it can control gap and direction. The fan type, it has three different types. The one up front is approximately 7 to 8.5 millimeters. In other words, if you make one drill hole and put a pin on that, you can consecutively get 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5 millimeter in space. So there are four types, so using three fan type bridge guide, the space between drill holes can be made from 7 to 12.5 millimeters. It is set with 0 0.5 interval. So you can adjust the size of space between drill holes. That's fan type bridge guide. As mentioned, the fan type bridge guide, you first use drill and use multi-joint handle to put in the drill guide pin, hold the bridge guide, and then make another drill hole. So it is very easy to control and use. Next is guide drill for initial drill. The guide drills Laser marking, as you can see, is approximately 17 millimeter. The prepared single guide height is 11 millimeter. So at the very bottom of laser marking, wide dimension of one millimeter aside, it is 17 millimeters. Therefore, if you drill to the very dot bottom of laser marking in the first example, the drill hole of six millimeter is formed. Second, if you drill to the top of laser marking, King, 7 millimeter, and then if it is drilled to the full length, once a single guide is fully in, there's a stop and 8 millimeter drilling is possible. Three stages. You can adjust the depths of drilling using this drill guide drill. Next, 2.2 twist drill. The fan type bridge guide that I mentioned, you create drill hole on the front and then you do initial drilling. This twist drill is what that's for. You don't use this drill with single guide. As I mentioned for single guide, do not use twist drill. For fan type bridge guide, you can use it as initial drill. Next is guide pin. It is the same with guide pin used conventionally. After drilling, drill path needs to be verified and this can be used as a tool to check. After drilling a hole, put on the guide pin and connect the single guide so that you can assess the distance between drill hole and direction. This is a tool for that. This is a guide pin for a special fixture. Let's look. Number 3536, two teeth are missing. Our recommendation is if you're a novice, place fixture on what's more towards the front and then accordingly place the second fixture. This is to reduce error. At times, you'd create drill holes for both, but in that case, first as shown here on number 35, you place this fixture and then superior to the TX fixture, connect the guide pin and then single guide so that you get more support for next to drilling. After placing the fixture, you can check the guide. So that is the pin for that. 
So as shown, guide pin was made for fixtures. So when you place implants consecutively rather than guide pin, you can connect it superior to the fixture and check path with it. Let's look at Easy Hands On. Easy Hands On, simply put, is a procedure using positioning guide kit. So for sites of 35 and 36, partially edentulous case. Using positioning guide kit, we can seek ways to do implant placement. So when using single guide, 36 and 35, choose the guide. And for 35, use single guide to drill and connect the guide pin and connect the single guide and check position. For 35, place fixture and then on top of it, connect the guide pin and use single guide to check. And for 36, use single guide to create drill hole and then place fixture. And after that, I'm going to look at the case where we use bridge guide. So we choose guide and for 35 using single guide we do initial drilling and after that to connect the bridge guide and for 36 using this bridge guide use 2.2 twist to drill to create the drill hole and use guide pin on 35 and 36 to connect the single guide and check position and after for both sites place fixture consecutively. This is how the hands-on is going to proceed. Oh, we are going to do a hands-on practice. The model has two missing teeth, number 35 and 36. The sides from 34 to 37, the height of contour is approximately 18 millimeters. And therefore, on the front, we're going to use a single guide, a diameter 8, and for the back, diameter 10 millimeter is going to be used. Guide drill, initial drill is going to be connected. After we do that, 8mm diameter single guide is chosen. We're going to connect the yellow part. If you look over here, there are wings, and on the other side, it's flat in drilling mode. We're going to have the wing part on the top, and there's a stoppy here, like this. Now we can do initial drilling. There's a tip here, and you can do drilling in this state. So if you're a novice or if you're having difficulty in natural teeth, it's difficult to get to position for initial drilling, so you can use pencil. You can also sterilize pencil when you do autoclave and on crystal. You can do marking here so that you'd be able to get the position of drilling more easily. So 8mm single guide is connected and in th number 34 you can see it's adjacent. Keep in mind the markings, and uh, now we're drilling. After that, look at the site. We're going to connect the guide pin, and we're going to check the occlusal relationship. So central groove and functional groove of occlusal tooth. If the position, the direction looks fine. If you're going to do drilling, connect a single guide and after that, towards the back, 10 millimeter diameter single guide is connected. And in this stage, we're going to do drilling once again. 
However, because there's guide pin, we're going to place implant on the front first and then place the implant in the back. So I'm going to remove the single guide and guide the pin and for drilling, in the 1 to 2 taper kit, we're going to use 3.5 by 10 millimeter drill. And using guide the pin, we're going to consider the path and the drill. 3.5 by 10 millimeter drill is used here. And as final, we're going to use 4.5 by 10 millimeter drill. 4.5 by 10 millimeter drill is used. And as shown, final drilling is done. And after that, we're going to place the fixture it's being connected now. 4.5 by 10 millimeter fixture is chosen and we're going to connect what is pre-mounted. And before you place it, please check whether it is in placement mode. And we're going to check the drill mode and place the implant. Implant is being placed. So using engine, it is placed to a some certain level. Use hand wrench to get final implant position like this. And as you can see, insertion torque is 30 newton centimeters. And at this stage, we can check the relation with the opposing teeth. First of all, we are going to remove the pre-mount. Use open wrench and hold the mount and use driver to remove pre-mount. Pre-mount is being removed. It's done. In this stage, there is a pin for fixture and we're going to use it to check position. So fixture has been placed and we can check the relation with the opposing teeth. And after fixture is placed, guide pin for fixture is used and then we're going to put the single guide upside down like this. You can connect the single guide like this. Guide drill for initial drill is chosen. And for 36, we're going to use 10 millimeter diameter single guide. And it's the same. We're going to connect it to guide drill. So the one where it's a bit jagged, we're going to put it here and you're going to feel the stop. And the tip for initial drilling comes out. And once you do initial drill, it's going to be pushed and drilling up to seven millimeter is possible. So in placement mode, we're going to use it like this. And afterwards, once you use it for guide pin, once you connect the guide pin like this, in patient's mouth, it's reverse. So in placement mode, it's upside down. And in this stage, in the teeth up front, there's guide pin on the fixture. And in relation to that, you're going to find the position. Single guide is transparent, so you can check the markings. And on crystal, you're going to put force and do drilling. Drilling is done. And after that, guide pin is connected and you can check a causal relationship. You can see that it's parallel. And the, we are going to use the single guide that was used previously to look. We can see that the positions are where we want to be. The distance and the path is ideal. And relation with the opposing teeth, you can see that drilling has been done in a desirable way.
Single guard is wall as guard pin is removed. And the one on front is removed as well. Now we are going to place 5.0 by 10 millimeter in the back. So we are going to use 3.5 by 10 millimeter drill, taper drill. As you can see, there's a guide pin on the fixture. This is maintained so that it, you can get help in getting drilling path. You see, this is parallel and it goes in 3.5 by 10 millimeter drilling is done. For final drill, 5.0 by 10 millimeter drill is chosen and guide pin can be used as a guide and you're going to use 5.0 by 10 millimeter drill. So now it's done. You choose your mount driver now and change the engine to placement mode and 5.0 uh, by 10 millimeter fixture is prepared and you check the engine mode once again to place the implant. Implant is being placed. So at this stage, you use hand wrench to place the implant. Insertion torque is approximately 30 Newton centimeters. An implant has been placed. And at this stage, using mount driver, using open wrench, you're going to hold the pre-mount. And we're going to remove screw. And we're going to connect the cover screw. And once this is done, everything is complete. In order to connect the cover screw, you need to open this and remove the cover screw from here. Placement is now complete. From superior alveolar bone, one millimeter below that, two implants have been placed. And surgery is complete, and you can do suture now. Next, we're not going to do multiple, and we're going to use fan type to do implant placement. This is the same model. And in the remaining alveolus, we're going to draw a line here and use 8 millimeter single guide is going to be used. Site 35, we are now going to find position and do drilling like this. Drilling is complete and we are going to use guide pin. And at this stage, we're going to look at occlusal relationship. And occlusal relationship is good, position is good, direction is very good as well. And at this stage, previously, we put on the single guide and placed implant first. And after that, using pin for fixture, drilling was done on the back. Now we're going to use fan type guide, so we're going to remove this. As you can see, previously, single 8mm and 10mm was chosen. The distance between drill hole was approximately 9mm. If you look at fan type, the second one, it's 9 to 10.5mm. So we're going to use this one. We're going to put the guide pin here and using multi handle. And 
and connect it clinically, you can get the position you want. The one at the very top is 9 millimeters. So now we're going to use 2.2 twist drill here. 2.2 twist drill is connected. If you look here, you can adjust the handle with your hand. You find the position that you want. The one at the top is 9 millimeter. And now we're going to position the drill and we're going to hold it here and do the drilling. At this stage, there's no stop, so you need to adjust the depths. Guide pin is now removed. If you look, at the front guide pin is connected and another guide pin is connected here to check the path. The two are parallel and the re occlusal relationship, if you look here, the path is ideal. The two drill, you can see that it's parallel from 1 to 2 taper kit, uh, we're going to use taper drill and place the implant. So guide pin on the front is going to be removed. And from 1 to 2 taper kit, 3.5 by 10 millimeter drill is going to be used. And on site number 35, we're going to do drilling. So we need to bear in mind that it needs to be parallel. Drilling is done. The one on the back, if you look here, on the pack, if you remove the guide pin on the tapered area, please put the guide pin and remove what is on the back. And using the one on the front, you can find the pack and use the 3.5 drill to drill. So it's done. And in site 35, we're going to place 4.5. So for final drill, we're going to use 4.5 by 10 millimeter drill. So if you move the guide pin towards the back, and we're going to use the final drill, 4.5 by 10 millimeter drill. So final drilling has been done, and after that, in placement mode, we're going to use the mounted driver. If you see here, 4.5 by 10 millimeter fixture is selected. So before you do placement, check whether the mode has changed from drilling to placement extra orally. So you need to check before you actually use it. And as shown, you conduct the placement of the implant. So with one to two millimeter remaining, as you can see, using the hand wrench, find the final position. You place the implant. If you see here, the initial stability is approximately 30 Newton centimeter. So if you use pre-mount on the front, you can see that implant is mounted and using this, you can place the implant on the back. On the back, we're going to use 5.0 by 10 millimeter fixture. So we're going to use 5.0 by 10 millimeter drill and check whether it's in placement mode. If you see, the pre-mount is used as a guide and final drilling is done. 5.0 final drilling is done. 5.0 by 10 millimeter fixture is now going to be placed. And before that, you need to check whether it's on placement mode to place the implant. So now we're going to use the hand wrench we are going to adjust the placement depths. Before we remove, if you look over here, 
the implants being placed, the occlusal relationship are good, the two implants are parallel to each other. So the relationship with the adjacent tooth is good, so you use open wrench to remove the mount. We're going to op use open wrench, so if initial stability is not good, you use this to remove the mount. And you open the lid and connect the cover screw. Cover screw is now connected, and if you do suture, then implant placement is now complete. So let's look at the questions. The first question is from Dr. Chung. If the defect is over 19 millimeters, do I need to choose 9 by 10 or 10 by 10? Please tell me how to choose the guide. At times, when there's missing teeth, at times the defect is huge. In my opinion, the single guide, uh, there's only the diameter goes only up to 10 millimeters. So when you place implant, uh, the distance with the natural tooth, it needs to be 1.5 to 2 millimeters. And between fixtures, you need to have at least 3 millimeters. But recently, for long-term prognosis, if the implant fixtures are too close, the long-term prognosis is bad. So when you choose a single guide, you need to consider the distance with adjacent two. So for instance, if number 35 is missing and you need to consider distance to number 34, and if you place 4.5 millimeter fixture, the radius of the fixture is 2.25, and if you put a distance of 1.5, leads to 3.75, so you can choose 8 millimeter single guide. You need to consider distance with adjacent tooth first. That would be ideal. And if the distance between fixtures is significant, you can use a splinting to do prosthodontics, and then you'll have no problem. The next question is from Dr. Shin. So on crystal, when I use guides, do I need to drill by drawing line on the mid crystal? So I think I showed you how I use my pencil. When we place first, it is difficult to find the correct position. In those cases, so when we sterilize the surgical kit, we sterilize pencils together when we autoclave. And if you use the pencil to do marking on the alveolar bone, you'd be able to gain more help in doing initial drilling. And if you mark using a pencil, because the single guide is made of transparent material, you'd be able to gain drilling position more easily using this marking. So this has been the Q&A session. If you were not able to raise your question during the broadcast, you can ask your questions on YouTube or Denall. So if you have questions, feel free to raise them and we will respond appropriately. I hope you raise a lot of questions. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for listening.